What's up, y'all? Welcome to Solo Game Day here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, discuss, medium, and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all because, again, Solo Game Day. Today we are busting out the third, I think third, installment of the Escape Tales series. This one, Children of Wormwood, designed by uh, Jacob Caban and Bartos... Idzikowski, I believe is how you say that. So welcome, everybody, watching live around the world as well as after the fact. I should also mention, published by Board and Dice. Board and Dice also very kindly provided us with a review copy. Now, this is kind of a, it's an Escape Tales game, so it's a uh, escape room type game. So there will be spoilers for the very beginning of this, but we're only going to do the first segment of this, which we have done with the other games, which doesn't ruin the rest of the game for y'all. So definitely, uh, it's gonna be interactive. It's gonna be between y'all, or together, y'all and me. And hopefully, uh, if you've watched any of these in the past, you know I need the help. So I certainly would appreciate this being a two-way street of communication. Uh, there you go, yeah, I saw that, uh, I saw Rainer is back from Poland and is in chat, so welcome Rainer. Uh, Board and dice, as well as a good friend of ours. So, yeah. Without further ado, let's let's get into uh, Escape Tales, shall we? All right, all right. So, we have our tokens, but other than that, everything else you pretty much see on the screen, except for the rule book, and then there are four story books. Okay, there's story book one, which is what we're, I'm pretty sure, only going to be using today. Story book two, story book three, and finally, uh, a map. It says, spoiler, do not open a map until it's given to you by the story book. Well, I have not opened it. I want to. It's killing me not to, but I have not. I have respected that. Um, there we go. So we have the rule book. I'm going to keep this handy for referencing things. A couple other things. We do have some helpful reminders, and we have the app. So there we go, all right, as we go along. There you go. And Rainer says, the introduction does not spoil anything related to the rest of the story. Simply introduces the story, the concepts that are new to this version, etc. All right. So a couple of things. Uh, so... We have C through uh, 001 down to like 130 something or other. Um, the F cards, there's F0, F10, they go down and then there are R cards as well that go on down to there and at the bottom of each of these is, don't look at that. All right, we have the beginning, which actually I did read a little bit ahead just to be able to get this set up. But otherwise, I'm not going to really talk about the rule book um, until we need to. And we'll go from there. Okay? Um, yeah, the, the com uh, combining cards. But we'll get into that, readers. So here we go, storybook. We have the prologue. Escape Tales. Children of Wormwoods. Your name is Gilbert. And you live in a small town tucked away in the darkest corner of the world and surrounded by hostile wilderness made deadly by worm vines. These plant hybrids are regularly seen just beyond the relative safe safety of the town's borders. And it is said that merely touching them, as they claim yet another part of the city, can drive a person mad. From what you know, this fate has befallen your parents. On the day you were born, worm vines breached your home and destroyed your family. Since then, you have been but a drifter, with no place of your own, taking odd jobs wherever you found yourself useful. The only source of joy in your otherwise bleak existence is Sevilla, a girl roughly your age, that you've been seeing for what seems like forever now. She is the daughter of Mayor Hel Heliot, Hell yacht. Yeah, go with it. Since a notable figure like the mayor wants to have nothing to do with the lowly drifter, Sevilla and you have kept your relationship a secret from everyone. Today started as any other day. 
You got up early, got draw, dressed swiftly to sneak out of Sevilla's room before her father would come to see her. Before you made your exit, Sevilla stopped you. Gilbert, there's something, there's something you must know, she said, her stern expression stopping you in your tracks. Your name has come up in my father's conversations. He's up to something, something secret. I don't know what. What? You blurred out surprised? Why would he be talking about me? Does he know about us? I don't think so, Sevilla says, slowly shaking her head. I'm not sure, but I think, uh, I think I know where we can find out more. She takes your hand and guides you to the cellar door. Whatever he's planning, it has something to do with that place. We still have time before he gets here. Maybe we could take a look? You hesitate, but quickly realize that Sevilla is right. There's no time to waste. You walk up to the door and start looking for a way to open it. And from there, here in the prologue, sorry, it says to read Poos. No, it's P005. All right, so we will move in here, right there, reading that. All right, that's the last you guys are going to see the book. So just, okay, that is. So there you go. It has the different numbers right there and on the sides. So, okay. You stop before a large wooden door and try to force it open. But, uh, but with no effect. The door is as, sturdy, is as sturdy as it looks to be. And the only way to get in is somehow open the strange lock. Give each player a player aid. It'll remind you all about the things you can do in the game. We'll go over that in a minute. Take card number 34. This is your character card. Always keep it on the table, as you can see. Take my word for it. That's card number 34. Uh, it says so, actually, right up there. All right. Uh, as you see, you have four statistics that will change during play. Stamina of five, spirit of two, sanity of six, and charisma of two. Locate the location cards. One and two. Uh, without looking at them. There are a bunch of other location cards there, but we don't need those right now. Uh, place them face down on the table in a way that makes a lock out of the two parts. This is a puzzle. In the lower right-hand corner, you can see the symbol corresponding to this puzzle. Locate the symbol in the in-game app. So we have a little triangle with a five on it. Up, oh, check that. We have the half of a tree pointing up to the right, so that is that one. Okay, wow. So there are four things. We're allowed to do whatever we want within the app without any kind of punishment in this, okay? So, there we go. So a couple things before we get started. The helpful reminders here. So to find out what Gilbert thinks about a particular game card, use the combine cards option in the app and combine the game card uh, number with Gilbert's card number C034. So we could probably do that to start. So why don't we why don't we start with that? So combine cards. So, oh, we cannot. So you'll notice that these are both C's. So C034 is Gilbert, and then whatever, but uh, the lock, the doors are actually L's. So we cannot do that, so never mind on that. We will go back to this one. All right, it says, reach each paragraph in the storybook carefully to avoid missing valuable information. I'll reread it in a minute. Explore the current location by placing action tokens on the map. We haven't gotten there yet. Uh, if you run out of action tokens, when you open it, da, 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 we don't need any of that. When opening a new puzzle in the game app, remember, remember to click the needed cards button. Only two tutorial card backs. That's all we need for this puzzle. Okay. Oh, my eyes are really acting up today, so I, I, I beg your forgiveness on the squinting. Um, and fair point, Rainer, you very well may. All right, so what do we have here? You stop before a large wooden door and try to force it open, but with no effect. The door is as sturdy as it looks to be, and the only way to get in is open the strange locks. All right, so what do we have? We have a five-sided blue, a four-sided red, 
a five-sided red and a six-sided dotted line. Both of those are dotted. Ideas, suggestions. What's up, Tim? So the answer has four characters. which hmm ideas and you know what let me double check in the rule book uh da, 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 da. So they're going to be letters or numbers, it looks to be. Uh, all right, let's see. Presumably the corner uh, numbers relate in some way. Okay, people say they think, oh yeah, oh hell, I didn't even notice those. Okay. So we have three, four, five, and five. All right. Correct. I'm thinking it's those four digits. I note that this one has a uh, dot, you know, a, a, a dashed border. Huh. I feel like such an idiot. Combine the runes, I could see that. Huh. How though? Hmm. Okay, I'm stumped. I'm an idiot, I feel like. Thoughts. Come on. Let's figure out the combo. It's four digits, we know that. Oh, and also here, I hit the hints button. Find the rule that determines the value in shapes based on their appearance. We can... Uh, three sides give you the number three. Okay. Okay, well, there. But my question is, the numbers in the shapes all refer to the numbers of sides in those shapes. I agree, but for the numbered or for the non-dashed side, just count the sides. So that would be five four. Chip says five, six, eight, eight. How do we get there? Square has four sides, so I agree that the four, but the fact that it's red, do we somehow combine them, subtract them? That's, that's my question. Uh... The numbers in the shapes all refer to the number of sides in the shapes. Dash shape presumably adds one, redness adds two. Oh, I see that. 
So, if it's red, add two to what it is. And if it's dashed, add one. I could see that. So, that would be five, seven, eight, because five sides plus two plus one, and then six. So five, seven, eight, six, five, seven, eight, six. I'm sorry, five, six, yeah, five, six. Okay, let me write these down, hold on. Let's try that. So, I like that. Five, six, and then that is five, plus a dash is one is six, seven, eight. So that would be eight, and that would be six, seven. So eight, seven. All right, intriguing, read uh, paragraph two. Okay, a moment while we do so. Paragraph two. The door clicks and opens before you. You tell Sevilla to keep an eye out as you start walking down the stairs. At the bottom of the stairs, you feel something near the ground. You've just broken a trip wire. Before you can react, steel bars drop down to block your way out. Seems like you need to learn what's going on here and find the exit. Time to take a look around. By the way, iced tea today. All right. Take card C053. This is a map card. We'll say, nope, too far. About right there. Nope. All right, turn location cards L1 and L2 face up and arrange them to recreate the image from the background of the map card and then take five action tokens. Okay, a moment. All right, so let's look. That appears to be it. Okay. This is similar. We played the others with us. Y'all know how this works. Okay, so a moment. Uh, this is P2, right. Put cars R0 and F0 face down to, recre uh, to create the uh, rest and focus decks, each with just one card. So we have the F, we're gonna move these off screen now. And the R. Rest and focus, okay. Now start exploring the room with your action tokens. To examine a part of the room, place one action token on an area on the map card and read the corresponding paragraph. Whenever you run out of action tokens and need more, decide if you prefer to rest or to focus. Uh, take the top card from the chosen deck. Your decision will impact Gilbert's statistics, but also give you action tokens. If the chosen deck is empty, you cannot choose this action. Good luck. All right, here we have it. Let's move that aside. <laughs> this is why you always check for traps. I agree. Uh, all right. All right, Chip, good luck. All right, so where do we want to explore first? What do we have? Um, so, you know what? Let's, uh, there we go. It's a little bit more zoomed in. So we have, uh, we have, well, looking at it kind of sideways, we have what looks to be a, oh, a worm vine there. We have some sort of picture. Uh, we have a torch here. We have some cup and chairs. We have some tools over there. We have a shelf. We have a bookcase. 
and like a vanity over there. We have some runes and other stuff. We have a torch and part of an entrance. Then we have a chest. Then we have a map, I think, over there. All right. So we have five choices. What's it going to be? Choose one. First one to get two things. Check the shells for board games. I mean, the obvious one is that, but I don't know that that's going to help us esca escape the worm vine, you know? So far, we have the, uh, the runes, the map, the vanity, and the shelves. All right, looks like the map got two. All right, so we will. I told you, my eyes are really bad today, so I apologize. The map looks to be P1, paragraph one. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, the cabinet contains an actual map of the town's surroundings. You've never seen anything like it. In fact, you haven't even heard of anyone going this far and getting back. A key is placed on the map. You will surely need it. However, the cabinet is closed and the glass doesn't break. Or it doesn't break easily, I apologize. Looks like you'll have to open the lock the normal way. Take card 179. This is a puzzle card. All right, a moment while I do that. 179. What's the bottom numbers? Oh, we're close. There we go. All right. Open the app. Uh, check the puzzle with the corresponding symbol. It's a good idea to check the required cards. All right. So here we go. Here's our puzzle to get into the map. And hmm. All right, so uh, the symbol is kind of that arrow to the right there, and it's card number 179. Arrow to the right. I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, it's that one right there. Okay, there we go. So needed cards, two puzzle cards, it says. Okay. So two puzzle cards, four digits. There we go. So looking at the screen. And you know what? Give me a second because I can't tell. I'm going to... Wow, that's my bad, y'all. I don't know if that matters, but you see the little combination there? I can make out like 8715760, but it, it doesn't look all lined up there. Okay. Oh, good call. Combine, uh, good call. Combine Gilbert and C179. Let's do that. Good call. Okay, so let's go back. Combine cards. So Gilbert is 034, and that was 179. I didn't know our neighborhood so big. Thanks, Gilbert. Okay, well done. All right. Okay. Huh. So there's a key. It's four digits. Classic Gilbert. Uh, I have not a damn clue other than, don't forget, there's also, if you notice, there's those symbols up there. Let's... Let's get it in a little bit tighter than that. Hold on. Oh. 
<sighs> yeah, I don't know that we can solve this with just this, but we need two puzzle cards. So those runes, like you said, in the top right, and there's some sort of key. Um, <laughs> Rainer says you really need the second card. I figured. I'm just, just, just saying. All right. So we have this. I'm just going to set this one aside for right now. Okay. It's going to hang out over here with Gilbert for us. What's eating old Gilbert? Um, yeah, those, it definitely looks like that symbol looks like the inner part of that. So I'm thinking we go with this one. All right. I agree. So let's go ahead and see that is going to be paragraph 21. Okay. Moment while we break this one out. Circular holes in the wall have labels corresponding to different town locations. As you look into the holes, you see what's happening at those places. This guy really has an eye on everything. It's a little creepy, but anyway, I digress. A few holes have labels you don't recognize, and as you take a look into them, you see the wilderness. Were those parts of the town in the past? Some areas, like this one, will give you no cards. However, they may still contain valuable information. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, well, okay, well, that was a bust. Hmm. Now, I might be thinking too much on this, but let me, y'all see that yellow thing right there in the middle of the worm vine? Grab my little pointer. Right there. I don't, I don't know if that's a ring. I don't know if that has anything to do with, anything to do with that up here, not sure. But there's also this stuff up there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see, 2A, so yeah, 2A being this one, the letters being across and the numbers being the vertical. I'm leaning towards 2A feels like a good one. Yeah, the, the one ring to rule them all. Yes, Greg, exactly. Uh, the three circled locations, um, let's, let's, let's take a look at those a little bit. Oh, I didn't even see, oh. I apologize. I didn't even see that they were labeled. All right, what do we have? We have the mansion house there, but the three that are that are in these that correspond on the map it probably are Town Square, Wally Street, and the warehouse. But we also have the Forgotten House down here. We have the main point there, the crossroad, and Marion House. Okay. Hmm. So, those three, okay, I assume. All right, well, um, I think we're of the same mind that 2A seems like a pretty good area. Then again, Rainer saying go for the ring, lots of rings. Uh, all right, so do we go picture or do we go ring? Those are the two options. Choose. Oh, by the way, I just saw you there, Rolf. I didn't put two and two together. How are you doing? All right, looks like the picture it is. So the picture is P004, so P4. All right, P4, go back. What a giant painting. 
Let me go ahead and take an aside. Jess and I went up to the St. Johnsbury. It's a fancy word, Antheneum. Antheneum, I think. The St. Johnsbury Antheneum up in St. Johnsbury, up in Vermont, which is near where our family's from. They have a amazing, giant uh, painting of a part of Yosemite up there. It gorgeous. Just anyway, giant painting. That's what it made me think of. Um, this, however, is not what I would call a giant painting. Anyway, the people in there look pretty similar to Haylot. Hell yacht. There you go. His ancestors, perhaps. Take card C117. This is a puzzle card. Okay, a moment while we do that. Done. Open a game app, check it. Good idea, require cards. You'll need specific. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. So let's go and take a look at what 117 is. Okay. God, I suck at these games. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of the downward sloping F symbol. So we'll come back to that one here. Downward sloping F. It looks like that symbol right there. Needed cards. Three puzzle cards for this one. C117. Gilbert. It's a bag of hair, but that's all right. Let's try here. 0, 34, and 117. I am not a smart man. Oh, there is so much going on in this painting. It's definitely important. Here's what I think. In a given color of chalices, the green gem is always on the right side of the red one, and the red gem is always on the right side of a chalice with no gem. Green. Okay, read that again while you're looking at this. In a given color of chalice, the green gem is always on the right side of the red. Okay, I see that. And the red is always on the right side of no gem, of a given color of chalice. I'll buy that, yeah. The golden chalice with no gem is between two chalices with red gems. Thank you, Captain. Golden chalice with a red gems between two chalices with two green gems. Any two chalices of the same color can't stand next to each other. Okay. All right. All right, well. Yeah, I get that from that picture as well, but I don't understand what we're looking at. We need three uh, hints, it said, right? Three, I'm not, not hints, but three, uh, three puzzle cards for this one. Well, I don't know that that really helped us. So we're gonna set that one aside as well. Now where? We have two, uh, two actions left. So presumably all five chalices are important so you know the first good chalice is red. One A. And there is no four. It's one, two, or three. And then A, B, C, and D. Uh, there's two shelves with chalices. Let's see. Oh, there are, in fact. There's one there and there's one there. All right, well, we have two uh, left. So which one do you want to do first? Go left to right? Or I kind of like that one. That one just looks fancier. I say we do 1D. Let's go 1D. I'll make that decision for us. All right. So that is hint number 15. Or paragraph number 15, as it were. All right, 15 says, an actual secret shrine. 
It looks like they are worshiping the worm vines in the forest as some kind of a god. And this room suggests that it's not a merciful deity. You decide to take the chalices from the altar as they seem important. Take card C1103, okay? Uh, it's a puzzle card, open the app, yada, yada, yada. Okay, all right, so let's see what 103 is. All right, we have some letters here. Uh, that is going to be one of the three required cards, so that's now two of them. And notice the letters on those, so... Okay, I mean the obvious thing is to grab the other chalice area which is here, so that's going to be paragraph 14. Okay, here we go. These shelves seem like they have a special purpose. There are two chalices standing in marked spots with a few more cups lying around. Take card 41. Puzzle, da 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 da. And there we go. All right, so we do have more letters. We're going to take these one at a time now, okay? So that one there, you'll notice the gold empty chalice has a, a Bravo. The chalice with the red gem has an alpha and a uh, the chalice with the green gem has a gulf phonetically speaking letters and down here we have e h i and f okay so No two of the same chalices can be next to one another. Green will always be to the right of red. Red will always be to the right of empty of the same type, and red will always be to the left of green. And you'll notice up here, we have the order of things, and we do have a whole lot of letters. Let me look. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. So we're going to be using them all. Yes, Ceylon. We're, uh, our goal is to take all seven of these chalices that have letters, line them up in this order here with these being the brackets, following these rules over here. So they have to alternate colors, or not alternate, but they can't be the same color. So we can't have this and then one of these. It's got to be something else. Yeah, I'm going to need a notepad for this a moment. Have my notepad. So 
So, E seems like the first one, and that's silver and red. So that there. So then, can't be silver, so it's either got to be a gold or a bronze at that point. All right, so now, while I'm going to go back to our original uh, C103, I'm going to combine cards. So give me one second while you guys are looking at that. Uh, Gilbert, for this card, says, so now I need some wine and I'll be ready to go. This one, uh, let's see, that will be... 41. So many chalices. Let's have a party. All right. And then going back to the rules on this one. I will read this again. Okay. In a given color of chalices, the green gem is always to the right of the red. And the red is always to the right of an empty. Golden chalice with no gem is between two chalices with red gems. And the golden chalice with a red gem is between two chalices with green gems. Any two chalices of the same color can't stand next to each other. Zoom in on 41. Yeah, sure, I can do that. So, <coughs> excuse me. No gem on this one. Green gem on that one. And then there is a green and a red, respectively, and none. Okay? Yeah, the first one can't be either of these because it can't be adjacent to the same color. So it can't be those, right? So now, a moment. You know what? There we go. That gets all the relevant information except for over here, just to the right of this. Ah, oh, hell. Nope, wrong one. There we go. There. Okay. We could probably get that a little tighter. There we go. Okay. I'm enjoying watching uh, the chat go on. By the way, if you're not reading the chat, uh, I realize it's not on the screen right here, but you know what? I might.
I'm letting y'all figure this one out. Because my brain's hurting reading this. And my eyes are crap today. So, all right, peanut gallery, what do you got? All right, so let's let's see if that's right, of what Jonathan has. H A B E G I F. Okay. Here we go. So H so empty has to go there. Because empty of a type. So there we go. Okay? That makes sense. So that is H. So that's this card. Then A is here, so red of a given type to the left uh, or to the right of that one. That would make sense, okay. Then Bravo would be the first empty gold. That checks out. That seems good, okay. Then E would be the second silver chalice, and red's got to be to the right of an empty. So, yeah, I'll buy that. Then looking at G would be uh, the last of the three bronze, or I guess red, whatever you want to call it, goblets. That makes sense. Okay, good. Um, so let's see, that is empty. And then A is red, red. H is silver empty. B is gold empty. E is silver red empty red. Yep, that checks out. Then G is going to be uh, red, green, yep, then I is going to be gold, red, okay, and F is silver, green, I think so, all right. Michael, I incidentally, I didn't know these games existed and just bought all three. Welcome, Michael. All right, so what do we have? H-A-B, let's see. H-A-B-E-G-I-F. Well put. Read number nine. All right, well done, well done. As you put, it, put the last of the chalices on its marked spot, you hear a satisfying click and see the painting moves a bit to the side. Behind it, there's a safe. Discard those three cards. Okay. Take card 159. Done. It's a puzzle card. Check it. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, here we go. All right. All right. So it looks like we got four but or six buttons, four of which are black one that's yellow, one that's blue in three different uh, rows, it looks like. Okay, and you see the little kind of N symbol on it?
There are six. Let's see what the needed cards are. There are two. So this and one other. We can check what Gilbert thinks. It's 34 and 159. 34 and 159. A safe. I'll be rich. At last. Uh, Gilbert. All right. Well, here's the thing. We have this. We have this, but I don't know, and we're out of action markers. So we could either rest or focus. The classic switch chalice uh, based safe mechanism, right? Yep. So, what do we do? We could focus, we could rest. It does, uh, Rainer, um, seem to be a common occurrence out of action markers. Uh, what do we need for the safe? We need one other card. We have that one and one other. So, focus or rest? I think focus as well, Michael. I'm leaning focus, but focus or rest? Well, we got one for focus, one for rest. What do we got? What do y'all want to do? Come on, come on. Told you it was gonna be interactive, this whole thing. Okay, well, here we go. Focus, rest. Looks like we're resting, all right. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and bust this out right there. Here we go. You force yourself to take a break and, uh, and rest for a moment. You lose track of time as now you hear footsteps upst upstairs. So much for getting out unnoticed. Still, you gotta get out. No, this is a modifier card. Slide it under your character card in a way that makes the stat modifications visible. Take four action tokens. So, we now have a little less sanity, so we're a little bit more stressed out. Okay. That's okay. I'm fine with that. All right, we get four more action tokens. Okay. So, we now have two other puzzles we have to gain, or we have to figure out. So, done, done. Done, done, done. What do we got? So we have four buttons here and a yellow and a blue button as well. Hey, Lars. All right, so as I said, explored, 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 explored. So we have there, 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 and the whole bottom row. You know, there are those symbols right here. It looks like for that as well. Just, just saying. I, 
I agree. There's a knife and some sort of hand or paw print or something on it on the table. I feel like w getting these buttons would be good. We only need one more to match up with this. I don't see any buttons anywhere. Or yellow and blue, something with that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, Gusarino also. What are the odds that that key goes into that padlock right there? Seems too obvious. Hey, Drew. Well. Bookshelf does have colored books, which could be the colors for the safe down here as well. You know what? We're going to go bookcase. I like that idea because I really want to get into that safe. So we're going to go there, which is going to be P20. Okay. Okay. A bookshelf filled with books. You've never seen so many tomes in one place. Where'd they get them from? Take card 96. Done. Check the app, yada, yada, yada. All right, let's see. Hey, there we go. That is going to be the second card for Lay Safe. So we're going to move this out of the way of the picture for right now so it doesn't distract us. Here we go. All right, well. Oh boy. All right. Okay. So this puzzle has six letters or six inputs here. Okay. We want a hint, let me know, but otherwise, there we go. So what do we have? We have six. We have six names in the middle shelf. E T N nope, the letters don't match up. The yellow and blue lines up as numbers, do they? I cannot see that for the blue, like I'm trying to get the yellow and blue to form up numbers and I cannot do it. First two rows spell the first two digits you need to use, Jesus says, so let's see. Uh, Oh boy.
So the first one is 18. I got that. Oh, the second one spelled out 20. So 18, 20. And I, I can't figure out the last one, so I'm going to look at y'all. Y'all say 87. Okay. So 18, 20, 87. Oh, actually, the order on the safe, though, says top show. Oh, so it actually should be, should be 2018-87. Okay, I like that. 2018-87. All right, well done, everybody. Paragraph 18. You open the safe only to find a few notes and some sort of mechanism. The notes say something about sacrifices to the wilderness and that they need to take place every three months. The last one was exactly, wait for it, three months ago, which means they play to make, plan to make one today. The mechanism is currently stuck. Looks like you'll need a special key to make it work. Discard those two. Well done, us. And by us, I mean, yeah, I'd say us. And then take card number three. Okay, here we go. Just says take card number three. Well. I mean, like. Just says take it. Okay, let me look in the rule book for that. So item cards. The background always has an illustration. Becomes useful later in the game. Um, okay, so we're just going to hold on to that. Still only have that one, FYI, okay? No, Lars, this isn't really spoiling really too much. This is just the intro on showing how the mechanisms work. Uh, eh. Okay, let's read uh, combined. So three. Huh, three and 179. Let's see what happens. Yes, it's definitely the right key, but first I need to get it out of the cabinet. All right. All right, so that's the right key. So there's that, okay. And getting back to that symbol, it's four digits and we still need one more puzzle card that has that on it, okay? So 1B, we've already done 1D, right? Or th I'm sorry, 1B or 3B. So there or there. I mean, we could smash it open. I like I like the idea with the the, the knife and stuff. What do y'all think? I agree. Let's go one B. It's going to be paragraph 12. Okay. A special crate for torture, torture tools, question mark? Some areas like this one will give you no cards. However, they may contain valuable information or parts of the story. Whee! 
That's what we call a red herring, I think, in our case. Okay, so that was a bust. Um, so we have here in the entire bottom row. I mean, that's the obvious pick, but we have two hints left. What do you got? Do we want to try what here? All right, yeah, 3B it is. So 3B will be number seven. A moment, here we go. A comfy chair just out of a prisoner's reach. You can imagine Helyut sitting there watching some poor soul being tortured. You also find a bucket filled with excrements. Upon a closer, albeit somewhat reluctant inspection, you find a false bottom in a compartment with some keys. One of them opens the shackles. What sort of deranged bastard chains you to a wall while leaving the keys within your reach? Do they find pleasure in this? Disgusting. Also, you will definitely need to clean your hands before Sevilla sees you. Take card 84, it's an item card, okay? Try to combine it with other cards in the game, for example, to open something. I mean, just saying those symbols match up, but Okay. So we'll hold on to that too. Okay. Well, we have one action left and there are four spots available. There is one, two, three, four. We have a key. There is a chest. Seems like the obvious one is right here, right? The whole time this weathered vine, or this worm vine is sitting there and we've avoided it, but yeah, I think the chest. I think so? So that is, oh God, I can't read that. Number 19, all right, here we go. This chest looks really old, yet it's secured with a new sturdy lock. You'll have to find the key that opens it, or, or, Touch base with the lock picking lawyer. Uh, little, never mind. Anyway, take card 140. Uh, it'll, it requires an item. Wow, wouldn't you know? There we go. That, coupled with that, sure seems to work out. So 84 and 140. Let's check that, shall we? So 84 and 140. So 0, 084. Read paragraph 10. The lock opens, you get into the chest. Inside, you find an intriguing book full of notes. It seems someone's been keeping track of worm vine appearances and connecting them to events and townsfolk. One of the pages lists people born on the day the worm vines appeared, calling them worm children. Some of the names are crossed out. You've always thought these people were lost in the woods, but it turns out they were sacrificed. Horrified, you discover that your name, as well as Sevilla's name, is on the list. Discard 84 and 140. Take uh, card 37. It's a puzzle card. Okay.
symbol, yada, yada, yada. Okay. All right. Let's check it out. Hey, there we go. So, a moment. Thank you, Jonathan, for that. Click on one. Pin five's binding. All right, okay, all right. And I would also like to point out we also have this, which I think is not trivial, but this is going to help us get into the case, I think. All right, so let's go back here. So we now have this symbol, two puzzle cards. We have the two cards, but before we do so, 37 and 179, 37, 179, okay, uh, actually wait, and 37, and we are 34, so let's see, see how wigged out uh, Gilbert is about having his name on there. Surely enough, I'm on the list. Honestly, I'd be surprised if I wasn't. Lucky me. All right, Eeyore. Okay. Apparently, I did a poor job of explaining that really the spoilers are just for the uh, intro. All right. So... Let's zoom in on the new card. Okay. Legend says, everyone who's born on a day where the worm vines came must be sacrificed, but the, of course, only if we don't need them. Thousand nine people in town, people to be sacrificed. All right, so now we have that. feel like huh is there anything else on that card there's really not other than the symbols in the top right hand corner There is that code down at the bottom, 1009. I mean, it seems too obvious, doesn't it? For that, but what the hell? Let's try it. Yeah, I could I could you I I I see where you're thinking, Gusarino. There's seven numbers there. So it could be 1,009 minus 7, meaning 1,002, or 1,009, or was it really 118, or maybe it's 111? All right, 1,002, let's try it. Let's go. I can get on board with that. And. All right, let's try the obvious answer then. Okay.
Oh, I see what you're saying. The overlap. So if you look, this is the one, two, three, four down and four across. Four across and four down, the number one is in that. And then over, huh. Then over from that is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and three in, two down. Eight across from that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two down is three. One, three. So what about one, zero, one, three? I like that. That's clever. Let's look. Ha ha! Well done. Well done, everybody. All right. Read P11. All right. You open the lock to reach the strange key in the map. The key doesn't look like it, it would fit a regular lock. Discard 37 and 179. Take card 106 and the map from the game box. Okay, take card 106 and the map. Oh! Boom! Now, here's the map. I'm not going to open this yet because I want to combine these first. 003 and 106. Read P16. After putting the key into the keyhole, you are able to unlock the mechanism. When you do, the steel bars which previously blocked your path move out of the way. You are now free to go. You make sure to take the map with you before running out. Now, what has happened upstairs in the meantime? Discard those two cards. Uh, if your current sanity is six or more, read 17. Our sanity is five. Otherwise, read P3. P3, here we go. You pick up the pace just to run into Helliot and his thugs. Sevilla, uh, tightly held by one of them, cries and wriggles, but to no avail. You try to get to her, but one of the thugs stops you. Well, well, Helliot says with a hint of excitement in his voice. What a sneaky little orphan you turned out to be. Now, you know, what we do... Uh, what we do now, you know what we do to keep the worm vines from entering the town. We plan to offer you to the woods today anyway, so let's just hurry up, shall we? He shoots a short glance at his thugs. Get to work. You yell that you will come back for Sevilla. The rest is a blur. The last thing you remember being her screams. You wake up in an old part of the city, heavily overgrown with worm vines. Despite a huge headache, you quickly find out that. Helliot's minions didn't even search you, so you still have the map. Do these sacrifices look like this? They just dump you somewhere? You better lay down for a while and let them think it worked. Congratulations, you finished the tutorial. Keep in mind that using too much time can negatively impact the story and can hinder your progress in many different ways, often not being as obvious as this time. Now you are ready for the real adventure. Buckle up, as it's going to be a rough, grim, and unforgiving one. Read P100 to start your journey. So, alas, if you want to see what the map looks like, you're going to have to get the game. So there you go. See what I did there? <laughs> that, was, that was good. Um... And don't, uh, Rainer says, don't open it. I wasn't gonna. Come on now. All right. Uh, there you go. And now you'll never know 
had we gone for the ring. You are correct. Uh, yeah, there you go. Jonathan, it looks fun, and I want all of them now. They're all pretty clever. Uh, I'll be honest, some of this stuff I wouldn't have figured out without y'all. Y'all are clearly um, smarter and more clever than I am. And just like uh, with escape rooms, Jess is a savant with this stuff, as are many of y'all. So there you go. Check it out. Escape Tales. That was fun. I enjoyed that. If y'all uh, enjoyed it, give it a thumb down below. Subscribe, all that stuff. Support the show over on patreon.com forward slash hchq. I will be back with, uh, with a whole host of folks, a four-player Kanban EV tomorrow, and then um, I believe we have Power Grid on Thursday. Got the podcast coming out. It's supposed to come out the other day. Our editor had a family emergency. That happens. Life happens. That'll be coming, and then another podcast coming out uh, later on this weekend. So there you go. So check it out. I appreciate you all hanging out. Thanks to Rainer and everybody over at Board and Dice for the review copy. And uh, yeah, check it out. Escape Tales, Children of Wormwood. All right. Cool. All right. Jonathan, I wrote off escape room games, but I love the, pro, uh, the puzzle solving. Exactly. Same. So, all right. I'll see you all tomorrow night, 1900 Eastern time. So spread the word. See you all then. Have a great rest of your day. Get vaccinated. Social distance, wear your masks, all that stuff. Be kind to one another. See you all tomorrow night. Later, everybody. Good job, y'all. Good job.